Today we're just kind of running through, we're getting all of our equipment ready for spring beaver. Uh, I'm running through my footholds right now. In the past I've primarily used 330s due to a lack of drowning rods. So I don't have the footholds exactly where I want them because like I said I bought them some years ago. I used some rebar drowning rods and it just wasn't exactly the system I wanted. So I'm going to run through, I'll show you that, kind of get swivels how I want them, adjust pan tension as needed. Then over here, I got some drowning rods, I got, I think I did 30 10 footers and 38 footers. That way, you know, I kind of get some control. There's some cricks a 10 footer wouldn't fit, and then there's some cricks where the 8 footer would be ideal. Got my beaver floats ready. And then got some new 330s. I traded those for some drowning rods, but I don't think I'm going to be setting these this year. I'm just kind of getting them ready, getting them put away. Um, otherwise, I'd be adjusting the triggers to where they're a T, to where they're, they'd work out half submerged and nothing showing above the water. But I'm not doing that um, because, like I said, probably not going to use them until next fall, and I'm going to want them straight anyways for setting in the runs. So here we got just a foothold trap that we're going to be working on. This one's an MB750. It doesn't matter what brand you use, it's all personal preference. You know, use different traps, figure out what you like for your exact instances. Um, the pan tension, I like a heavier pan tension in the spring. Uh, just because I don't want to deal with muskrats in my state, I have to turn incidental muskrats in. Um, as much of a hindrance as it is, we have to by law. So I don't want to deal with muskrats in my footholds, so I like a little bit heavier pan tension. I want that beaver to be committed to the trap. And, yeah, I just kind of know by feeling kind of the pan tension that I want, and this one currently has that. Otherwise, I'd adjust the pan tension accordingly. Now the swivel right at the trap, I'm going to open up the furthest J-hook from it that connects into the chain. I'm going to take the chain off, and then with those 330s that I had bought, the first thing I did is I took the chains off. And with that, the Bridger 330s that I had, uh, they come with two swivels on them, so I just took those off the chains and I'm going to put those right on these traps. I'm going to close that, and that's how I want it. Then I got a trap tag out there on the chain. I'm probably going to add another one just for the heck of it. That way I never really have to sit and think about it. I typically prefer them over the swivel. I don't know why I put it on the chain, but so what I did at the time, but now I got two on there. If one falls off, we're all good. The other thing I forgot to mention is then I'm going to add a drowning lock on to the end. So with that, I'm just going to add a J-hook to the stock swivel, put the drowning lock on, and then close it. There you go. Now it's permanently attached to the trap, and those come on and off the rods easily. So that'll work out good. So we got the bed of the truck loaded, uh, we got all our beaver floats in, currently things are still iced up, there's still quite a bit of snow on the ground, and I'm thinking when I'm going to be able to get traps out, there's still going to pretty much be those types of conditions to where I won't be able to dig, you know, sets for 330s, might be hard to get a foothold in, you know, just dealing with all that, there'll be shelf ice. So the floats, they'll be able to help me get some sets out and get some beaver, you know, get start building the numbers. Um, we got the traps right here. We got the shears for cutting the popple. Got an axe just in case we need it. Well, I got a bucket of lure. We got our bucket of cables. Then we got uh, four ounces of Mike's Finest. You always have uh, wire and pliers just in case you need to make some sort of repair along the line. Gauntlets just in case we need them. Uh, in the bed of the truck we got waders, hip boots. If I can I'll wear just the hip boots but I'm probably going to end up wearing the waders. In the past I always wore knee boots, last year I started wearing hip boots and it's like well at this point you might as well just switch to using waders full time. Things are pretty iced up and snowy yet so I think it will be another week before we get out. 